Hey all you Hulmaniacs, it's Hulmanator. So today I figured I'd show you a recipe all of my own, well, I say my own, my family's really, me and my brother kind of workshop this together. We call it the Meatball Surprise. The recipe has evolved over the years and changed quite a bit, so he may actually disagree with me with some of the ingredients I'm going to put in, but regardless I'm going to show you what I did and hopefully you can enjoy it just as much as I do. There are only three essential ingredients to Meatball Surprise, and the first one is obviously pasta, because if you're a student, you're going to want some pasta in there. The next is surprisingly cheap to get, and that would be a can of meatballs in tomato sauce. Now you can get raw meatballs and make your own sauce for it, or you can just buy chopped tomatoes. But personally, this way is easier and it can work out cheaper sometimes. And the only other thing you'll need is cheese. Now, normally I would use cheddar, but I haven't been able to get a hold of any recently. So I'm just going to use up the last of this Lancashire cheese, which is very crumbly, but hopefully should taste alright. Now, as I said, those three are the only things that you actually need in your meatball surprise. But the rest of all this is just stuff that I add every time. It's all optional, but it's a good choice. So, I put in some mixed herbs, a tad bit of rosemary, a little bit of crushed chilies, a heck of a lot of mint, very little mixed spice. I've gone off it quite a bit, but I used to put in loads. And then I add in some more chilli because why the heck not. And I always add some barbecue sauce. Though this one is a very acquired taste, most people won't use that. I know my brother has a tendency to add Worcester sauce in, so maybe try it with that once. Another great thing about this recipe is you literally only need two pans and maybe a kettle I guess, but that's more just to boil the water for the pasta, which in theory you can just do with the pan, so... While the kettle boils, I'm going to begin to prepare the meatballs. So. Oh. The good thing about using Lancashire cheese is it's so incredibly brittle that I can just crack it in my hands directly into the pot. But obviously with regular cheese, you just want to grate it instead. Now that the cheese is added, you may as well add the pasta to the pasta pan because my water has just boiled, so... Remember to put in less than you're actually going to eat because pasta expands when you cook it. Stick it onto a high heat. Once your pasta is boiling, which is not quite there for me as you can see, then it will only take about 10 minutes till it's, as some people like to call it, al dente, or in other words, perfect. Let's get it back onto the meatballs themselves. Now it's at this point that I like to add the barbecue sauce, or rather what little left that I have of it, because I've so overused it in making this dish and others that are uh, I'm kind of running low, so I need to get more. Note to self, get more barbecue sauce. Once you feel particularly saucy, you can add in your herbs and spices. Now, I tend to measure it out on my hand. That's slightly too much mixed spice for me, but I'm going to have to deal with it. I don't tend to measure chilli powder out in my hands just because, well, it's chilli powder. I'd rather not get it in my eye or anything else when I inevitably rub my hands into something. And the meat, which to be honest I've come to accept as an integral part of this meal, even though it wasn't originally. I, uh, I love a lot of meat. That essentially acts as an entire topping. And you may have noticed, I have incredibly overseasoned this. Don't do what I did. Be smart. Look how much overseasoning that is. Oh well. 
It should take about between five to 10 minutes for the meatballs to be done, but I always give a little extra time just so that I know that the cheese has really melted in there. Remember while both of these things are cooking to stir for up, the last thing you want is to have got to the end of the cooking process and then realize that all of your food is stuck to the pan itself. You may have noticed I'm using the same spoon for both the meatballs and the pasta. And the main reason why I'm not worried about any cross contamination is because the meat is already pre-cooked and herb transfer won't be a problem because the pasta is going to be covered with the sauce from the meat. By the way, I sometimes do have the pasta on its own, it's just kind of a snack thing. So that's also a thing that you could prepare for yourself if you wanted. Also, I normally add more than one can of pasta for this sort of meal, but today I only have the one because I already ate the other one. Remember, you're gonna need to test your pasta before you actually just take it out of the pan. Once you get a consistent bubble from your meatballs, that's when you know you're gonna want to turn them down a bit and just let them simmer until the pasta is actually ready. And you'll know when the pasta is ready when it tastes just right. It's got the right level of softness for you. I'm pretty satisfied with how this is, so I'm gonna turn the heat off and begin to plate up. Now, now as soon as you plate up the meatballs, you're gonna to want to run this pan under cold water because otherwise the remainders of the sauce will stick to it and that can be a nightmare to get off. Now, that looks lovely to me, but um, just so you know, the color of the sauce will change greatly depending on how much cheese you put on it and the sort of cheese you put on it and also everything else that you put in it. If you don't put in barbecue sauce, then it's going to be a lot lighter. If you add in a whole load of cheese, then there's a chance that the tomato sauce may turn orangey. So yeah, it's always an interesting combination to see exactly how it comes out. I realise some of you may be wondering why it's called a meatball surprise. Uh, that's largely because the ingredients change in terms of what I put in there and the quantity of what I put in there almost every time. So there's no guarantee in how it's going to taste because it shifts so often. But, let's give this a whirl. The meatballs are good. Pasta's good. I like it, but then I am a bit biased, as I said. This is something that me and my brother have concocted and changed continuously over the years, so uh, I would like it. But. Feel free to try and create your own meatball surprise. Change the ingredients up if you like. Just remember that you need the meatballs, the sauce, and the cheese. Those are the only really essential part to it, and the pasta, obviously. But um, those are the main ingredients. So I hope you liked it. Okay, thanks for watching all. I shall catch you next time.